Well, we are so glad that you are here with us today. This is our entryway. This is where we welcome people into our home, give a handshake or a hug. We are huge huggers. It's very hard to not hug people <laughs> during this time of social distancing, but we just love welcoming people into our home and getting to know more of their story. We host a Grace Church community group in our home, and community groups are for all people, young and old, singles, families, conservatives, liberals, uh, those that, are, that feel near to Jesus, those that feel far from Jesus, black, white, people of every ethnic identity. Not because it's politically correct, but because every person is made in the image of God. Yeah. Every person is worthy of love and, yeah. and, and just matters deeply to, to people. And so we welcome all people in. Diverse people, Gathering together in the name of Jesus is a deeply important thing to God. All throughout scripture, we are encouraged. Different people, diverse people, come together and be united. This matters deeply to God. And we do it here in our home, but it's also where we're going. You see in Revelation chapter 7, the future of where we are going, it says that all people of every tongue, tribe, and nation are going to be worshiping God together. Yeah. Today we are going to be looking at Mark chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 20 and we're looking at this real life moment of Jesus. And it says, Then Jesus entered into a house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. This is chapter 3. This is just the beginning and already this is the third time that Jesus is at Peter's house. Peter's house has become this place where Jesus gathers people together for people to learn about God, to experience God. And I want you to picture this scene. I mean, there is, it's packed in this house. It says they don't even have time to eat. It's safe to assume that there's all kinds of people, sinners and saints, religious people and people that are everyday people, maybe far from God, people with mental health issues, Mm. people that are physically handicapped. You know, it is easier to be around people that are just like me. It's easier. It's just more comfortable. But when I get to know people different than me and welcome them and get to know their story and walk in their shoes, not only do I grow, but I learn more about who God is. Did you ever think about that Jesus wants to come over to your house Mm -hmm. and bring other people into your house? Or maybe you go into other people's homes and gather and experience Jesus together. You see, we have this idea that hope is found in me and God alone. Hmm. And it's just not true. You see, hope is found when we come together as a community of people. Yeah, and that's what we want to do here in our home. We want to welcome people uh, from various backgrounds of life and welcome them all the same. And You know, sometimes when you go to someone's house for the first time, it can be a little awkward and maybe you realize you have some differences, but maybe as you sit with them and as you continue to pursue them and to get to know their story, you realize that you actually have more in common than you really thought. So I want you to picture you pull up to a house that you've never been to before, but you got to go inside. Maybe it's your kid's birthday, uh, you're going to a friend's house and you're like, is it going to be awkward? Am I going to be awkward? You know, and maybe anxiety begins to to come up, but you you go into the house and I'll never forget meeting Mary in as she walked into this space right here. We met Mary clearly different than me, uh, different in age and space of life and gender and all those things. But we welcomed Mary in and and she kept coming to our group. And after about six months or so, uh, Mary courageously shared with the group that from the very beginning, she had a lot of fear. And a lot of anxiety, social anxiety, just coming into our home. And especially in that moment, as as Mary just had the courage to share, it just felt like it bonded us together. And Mary, it was like Mary was a part of our group, but she became a part of the family. Yeah, we cannot imagine our group without Mary now. We love her. Yeah, this is really where hope rises, where we get to know each other's story and discover that we are so different, but united together. But this is just the beginning. I want to invite you to come into our living room. Well, Grace Church, we have a new song for you today. We've been talking a lot about hope and a lot about the promises of Jesus. And so this song came to mind. It's called Prophesy Your Promise. And it's all about when we can only see a part of the picture, prophesying those promises of God over our whole story. Because God can see the whole picture, right? God knows, even when we can only see a small part of it. And I love this first verse because it says, open arms and open heart, you called me in. 
So not only does Jesus do, do that for us, but he wants us to do that for other people. And today we're talking about community. So this song just hits on so many different levels. We hope that you guys enjoy it and that you'll worship with us. Sleep. 
Well, this is our living room. It is never this clean. This is where we build forts with our kids and do puzzles and watch movies on Saturday nights. And it is also the place that we go a little bit deeper with our friends, a little bit deeper with our community group, and ultimately we become a family. That's right. You know, is that even okay to say? It seems almost cliche. <laughs> like we're trying to be something that yeah. we're not really a, a family. There's an incredible teaching in Mark in Peter's home that is so important about what, how Jesus sees us and how yeah. we're to see each other. Jesus says, he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and my sister and my, my mother. He says, whoever does God's will, he, he's, it's just this beautiful thing of inclusive, just opening up wide the family of God. Whoever follows me, whoever trusts me, whoever obeys me, what is Jesus doing? He's expanding the family. He's growing the family and saying, whoever wants to become a part of this family, you are welcomed. And I love the detail that Mark puts in here. He says that Jesus looked at them. Mm -hmm. And if you can imagine, you know, our, our community group sitting around here in a circle, Jesus sitting with us and him to look us in the eye and call us sister or brother or mother or father. I mean, mm -hmm. What an honor to be called that by Jesus. And ultimately what he is doing here is he is enlarging his family. He is um, forming, ultimately he's forming a new family. It's beautiful. Yeah, brother, sister, mother. Yeah. In the Greek language that this was originally written in, there's no definite article before those three words. And the definite article gives the word definition. And so he's not saying you're my biological family, but what he is saying is that we are spiritual family. In this general sense, we are the, uh, the family together. Now, it would make sense, in my mind at least, for Jesus to say we're close-knit, communal kind of family to his 12 disciples, yeah. right? They, they're following him everywhere. They're around each other all the time, but he's not. He is looking at this huge crowded house of people yeah. and saying, you, all of you, I consider my family and you need to, well, you can consider each other family. Here's a picture of our beautiful community group. We started meeting last fall and we started going through Financial Peace University, learning how to knock down debt and mm -hmm. save. Yeah. We've also gone through sermons. Uh, and this summer, I'm excited. We're going to go through Be the Bridge of Racial Unity. And it's just so amazing. But we meet week after week and month after month. And we share moments together and share our faith in God and learn about who Jesus is together. You know, it's this consistency that takes time for us to bond and to build this kind of family. In the last few months through COVID, we've been meeting through Zoom, but we don't stop meeting. We continue, we keep gathering together because we are the church and we need each other. We are a family to each other. And you know, it's in the darkest times where the church rises up and shines yeah. the brightest. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a few statements that we like to say every time we gather together. And these have just kind of become our, our group norms. They help shape our culture, shape the time that we spend together. Mm -hmm. And one of those statements is that we say we are the crossroads of the gospel of Jesus and real life. And ultimately what we mean from this is that we are um, a safe community, that we invite people to come as they are, that no one is putting on any false pretenses. We are not trying to put on a mask of perfection, mm -hmm. but we really want to walk and journey together in our faith with Jesus. Yeah, and we, we don't wanna just be a community. We don't wanna just be a social group. We truly wanna be people that gather together just as we are in the name of Jesus to let him shape us, yeah. to let him form us into to becoming more and more like him. And it can be a little vulnerable mm -hmm. to talk about our faith in God. Um, you know, sometimes we want to just quickly share a testimony and then move on. But it's, it's that daily day in and day out journeying with Jesus, learning to listen to the Holy Spirit, learning to, to commune with God's presence every single day. That's what we want to do here. Mm. And I want to share with you a story about one of our group members who is now a dear friend. Her name is Jen. And I met her and her fiance, Trevor, about two years ago at Grace. They had just started coming and Jesse introduced me to them. Mm -hmm. And something in me um, said to invite them over for dinner. And so we did, we had them into our home. And in that first time getting to know her, I learned that not only was she new to Grace, 
but she actually was new to Jesus, mm -hmm. that she had just begun to explore faith for the first time in her life. Mm -hmm. And it has been such a gift to watch her um, eventually profess her faith in Jesus and be mm -hmm. baptized and now join our community group and just really become a part of our family. And every time she shares not only how she came to know Jesus, but how Jesus is real in her life day in and day out. Mm -hmm. I just see this hope rising up in her. I see hope rising up in our community. Um, it is, it's forming us and shaping us and creating this atmosphere and this culture of vulnerability mm. and safety. And um, it's just been a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah, it's such an important point that in actually articulating your faith, in verbalizing, putting yeah. into words, what Jesus is doing in your life and how he's stretching your faith. And as you get it out there to the group, it actually forms you, the person yeah, sharing it. It yeah. actually shapes you into becoming more and more like Jesus. And obviously the people around that are listening, their faith is getting encouraged as well. This is, this is where it happens. This is why it's not, we can't do it alone. This yeah. is why we gather in community as we share our faith with each other and hear from each other. Hope truly rises up. But there's another space uh, where we go a little bit mm -hmm. deeper still. It's in our kitchen. Welcome to our kitchen. Mm -hmm. This is where we go a little bit deeper as a family. This is where we get a little bit more real with each other, uh, with our kids and with each other, with Des yeah. and I. We've had some moments in here, organic conversations that happen. Also with our church community. There's a picture of uh, us gathering this last summer. These are some dear friends of Desiree and, and mine. And a lot of the people in this picture know my story and I know their story. We've had great conversations where we've opened up and shared one-on-one -on -one and gotten vulnerable with each other. Yeah. And how does hope rise when we are vulnerable? Because that feels and sounds a little contradictory that our hope rises as we share the deepest parts of our heart that we really don't want to reveal to anybody. I believe that we share about 98% of our lives with safe people. We'll let people into relationship issues and marriage struggles and parenting and maybe even some past trauma and hurts. But there's always that last little bit that we don't ever want anyone to know about. I love how Jenny Allen puts it in her book, Get Out of Your Head. She calls it the last 2%. And it's just that part of your life that you don't ever want to be exposed. Maybe for you, your, your last 2% is rage that you feel towards your kids sometimes. And, you know, quarantine life gets the best of you. And you are so ashamed of how you feel towards them or how you speak to them at times. Maybe um, loneliness is leading actually into depression. And you are, are so embarrassed to tell that to anybody, to let anybody into that pain and struggle. Maybe there's a habit, maybe there's um, a stress reliever that you have that is now turning into an addiction and you feel so ashamed of bringing that into the light. But the thing that happens when we are vulnerable and when we let people into that last 2% is that it breaks the shame over those strongholds and that really it causes hope to rise up in us that we can overcome these struggles in our life and we don't have to do life alone. I love how James 5 puts it that if we confess our, our sins to one another, if we pray to one another, that we will be healed. Amen. A few weeks ago, I went on a socially distanced walk around Lake <laughs> Murray, and um, we had covered all the basics that my good friend and I usually cover. We talked about our marriages and our kids and things that we are reading and learning. And I kept putting off my last 2%. I didn't want to tell her about it. Hmm. And we finally got to our car an hour later and I looked at her and I said, I need to share my 2% with you. Hmm. And so I did, I got off my chest, something that I had been struggling with for a few months now. And I will never forget her response to me. She looked at me and said, me too, me too. She had been struggling hmm. with the exact same thing. And what happened in that moment is that there was greater safety and trust that was built between her and I. Mm. And it also started to break the shame over this struggle for both of us. Hope rose up in both of us that we didn't have to carry this thing alone, that mm. we could actually bear each other's burdens. We could pray for one another. 
Um, and that's exactly what happens when we share those, the deepest part of our lives, our deepest pain, our deepest struggles. When we let people into that last 2%, we are able to be seen and known and loved, and that is where we see hope rise up. It's in these spaces, in, in our entryway, in our living room, in our kitchen, where hope rises up. It really is. It's where we get to share with each other our stories and how we're so different from each other, but come together united. Yeah. It's where we share our faith in God and the challenges and the struggles that we have, the ways we're being stretched in our faith. And we share that with each other, that hope rises. It's where we share our pain and our struggles, where hope rises. Some of you may be feeling spiritually homeless. Mm. And what I, what I mean by that is you may be feeling like you don't have a home with God. Mm. Or maybe it's you don't have a home with other people who are also pursuing yeah. God. You see, Jesus is preparing a home for all people who, who follow him and love him. We've seen Jesus enter into the home of Peter. We've seen Jesus enter into this home and, yeah. and meet with us and meet with other people in this space. But, but Jesus is also preparing for you and for me an eternal home. You see, in John chapter 14, Jesus says this. He says, My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? Mm -hmm. You know, I love this earth and I love this home and I love my home church and all the gifts and all the experiences that I get to experience. But I can't even imagine. Can you imagine what that home is going to be like? These different, this, these rooms and these places that Jesus is preparing for yeah. you and for myself eternally in heaven. The way to this house, the way to the home of God is through Jesus Christ. Believing in Him for who He says He is as the Son of God. And putting your faith in Him that, that when He died on the cross and rose from the dead that that is how you are forgiven by God. Mm -hmm. Our sins need to be forgiven in, in order for us to have a relationship with God, to be his son, to be his daughter. We need to be forgiven and made right by him. And if you want to become a child of God, to enter into the home of God, I want to pray for you. Mm -hmm. I want you, you can join me in praying this prayer in your own heart. Let's bow our heads. Let's pray. Father God, I feel homeless spiritually homeless, God. I don't feel like I am in your home or a part of your family. And God, I, I want to be your son. I want to be your daughter. I want you to be my father today, right now, and for, for the rest of eternity. God, I believe in you. I'm sorry for, for not being home with you. But God, I believe in you now. And I, I just ask that you would forgive me Make me right with you. God, I want to be born into your family to be your son, to be your daughter. I believe in you, God. God, help me to, to be connected into a spiritual home as well, to find a, a home at Grace Church and in a, in a community group or in a connect group where I can be known and, and have brothers and sisters in Christ. God, I, I long for that. I want, I want that. God, help, help me find that here at Grace Church. God, thank you for your love for me. Thank you that you call me your son and your daughter. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.